Hey, how's everyone? This is Arne Menconi, and I am your U.S. Senate candidate. I'm not going to do that. Let me just go into this. Um, I started a little show that some friends of mine wanted me to start uh, about a month ago called The Unscrewing of America, USA Nightly. It was sort of a, a homage to Larry Wilmore and the fact that uh, the Daily Show sucks, and they've sold out, and that um, John Oliver is not doing it, and Samantha Bee's not doing it. So, hi, Ellen. So, we wanted to do a we wanted to do a show where we distill information about politics. Since I'm running for office in the state of Colorado for U.S. Senate as a Green Party candidate with 19 days left. Yep, that's 19 days left. What that says is that I get to run with the ball and I get to learn things, see things, interact with the media, interact with the Republicans and Democrats. I had been a former Eagle County Commissioner for eight years. I ran game for the Democratic Party. I ran a charity for 21 years, a national charity. I have a master's in business administration. And I had had a for-profit business, which was in real estate management when I worked with real estate developers. So. Now that I got a little warmed up, what we're, what we're trying to do with the unscrewing of America or USA Today, USA Nightly, is to just let people to know how to get unfucked. Pretty simple, right? I mean, we all want to get fucked once in a while, but not that kind of fucked. And so um, it seems like you guys are liking the humor, you're liking the information, so we'll keep doing this until uh, John Kerry tells uh, the Ecuadorian embassy to close down my show. Um, and that's what I'm here to talk to you about. First and foremost is the, the WikiLeaks story. So I put up seven points that I researched and looked at. And what I did is I went through and looked at what all the alt media was doing with regards to WikiLeaks, what the, what the mainstream media was talking about with looking wiki whatever wiki leaks and we've seen this wiki leak versus wiki flood we've had a flood of information and a couple of things to remember is first wiki leaks has started started uh with julian assange is over five years in jail i believe it is or four to five years in jail he's hiding out in an ecuadorian embassy um he's not able to leave uh he was uh He's, he's taking information from other whistleblowers, other leaks, and he's aggregating it and he's putting it out there. And so what we're doing is we're getting woke on all of the things that he's producing. He's made a few mistakes. Snowden's not always happy with them. There's a rivalry between Snowden and Julian Assange that I know from a uh, firsthand account because uh, Snowden became the boy wonder with The Guardian and then, you know, he then Glenn Greenwald got $250 million from the founder of PayPal, was able to bounce on The Guardian and set up shop with, with The Intercept. He brought in Matt Taibbi, he brought in, um, he brought in uh, Jeremy Scahill, Lee Fang. You've got you know an all-star group. It didn't work out with Matt Taibbi because he had a bunch of journalists who didn't have somebody who could manage an organization. And so they are kind of flying by the seat of their pants at sometimes. And sometimes they're branding themselves. And sometimes they're looking out for uh, their brand. Like, uh, and, and, the, and the ACLU does this. And we're all guilty of doing this. But Julian dropped some great stuff. Did he not? Did Julian not teach us something? that we sort of already knew but was able to connect the dots better for us. So here's what my take is and what got dropped. Oh, let me back up one more thing. I, I, my um, resume also includes that I, I, I work with the whistleblowers. I work with John Kiriakou. I work with Jeffrey Sterling, Daniel Ellsberg. There, I've been um, trying to work with uh, Chelsea Manning and doing a hunger strike for her when she was on her hunger strike. I do uh, regular 
in, uh, regular demonstrations for John, uh, for for Jeffrey Sterling, who's in a uh, in a penitentiary here in Colorado. I spoke to Holly earlier today, and I'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, and then you have Edward Snowden. So it's uh, and there's Jesslyn Radak and Thomas Drake. So I've met Jess, I met Tom, brilliant people. Follow them on Twitter, and they'll enlighten you, no doubt. They've all been screwed. They've all been screwed for a real simple reason. They told the truth. They told the truth when the Obama administration is already leaking information. But the way the Obama administration leaks information is when they want the information leaked, they let they do it. They give it up to whoever they need to. Dick Cheney did that with uh, on Meet the Press. He leaked the information. He then went on Meet the Press. He quoted the story that ran in the New York Times, and that is what started. That was what started the Iraq War back in March of 20, 2003. That's how they started to get consensus. So we're seeing the same thing, but it's played out super fast right now this week, a lot of information in an election season. So what they're doing is they're trying to get us distracted on pussy because it doesn't take much for guys to get distracted by pussy. So they have this, it's just crazy, right? You know, drop the story about Donald Trump groping women on a Friday, drop the WikiLeaks, and at the same time Obama say that He's going to do that, that it's um, Russia who is doing all the leaks. Well, here we are about a week or two later, and we're finding out it's WikiLeaks. We know WikiLeaks is credible. We know that the federal government and Obama is lying. We know that they're doing this to preserve Hillary Clinton. We know that they're trying to give the American people so much information about Donald Trump that they can't pay attention to the WikiLeaks. And the WikiLeaks is, is telling us that the Obama administration is set up running shop for Wall Street, for Goldman Sachs, for Citibank. And that all went down in 2008. At the same time, there was a major crash in the stock market where we went into a recession, where we did a $800 billion bailout for Wall Street. $800 billion, and then you add in quantitative easing, and it's another $30 trillion. $30 freaking trillion. Do you believe that? So you have, we have to think real, real simple here, like we're gangsters and like we're, like we're drug dealers. You go for the most amount of money. So the most amount of money was dropping in 2008 when Obama was making a transition when Rahm Emanuel was running the show, Rahm Emanuel was a former investment banker. Rahm Emanuel's from Chicago. I'm from Chicago. Obama's from Chicago. And you have the Pritzker family who runs Chicago. And guess who's the head of the Department of Commerce? A Pritzker. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? And that's how Obama got his money in order to run. And they knew who she was going, they knew what he was going to do for them, all right? So it might sound conspiracy to some of you. You may not like the way I'm putting it down, but I also hope the ones that do like what I'm doing is you got to share this. This isn't about preaching to the choir. You get it? The choir's job is to sing, and your job is to share this information because no one's sharing it right now. Nobody's talking about the fact that John Kerry, who's denying it, forced the Ecuadorian government in order to shut down the server for WikiLeaks. And the reason that he had them shut it down, if you look at the Guardian article, is all the Guardian is saying is that because it was fucking with the American election. Well, fuck. Fuck with the American election. They've been fucking with the American election. 2000 with Al Gore and Bush, they stole the election. They stole the election and 2004, they're doing, there's election fraud, there's election fraud, and I forget the third one, right? You hear me? You see where this is going? Why is there election fraud? Because they don't want fucking Donald Trump in office because he's, he's crazy as F. And if you put him in, they can't control him. They control Hillary because she's crooked as F. So we've got this, 
we've got this cabal, and they know they're going to win the, the Senate. The Senate's going to go uh, Republican or stay Republican, and they're going to control the House. So they got the House, and they got the Senate. And they've got what we think is gridlock. Well, well, they have, well, we have gridlock in our minds, in our illusion, in our alternate universe, parallel universe, whatever you want to call it. What do they get? They make mad money. They make mad money on quantitative easing because that's the game for them. Overnight trades of short-term interest rates that they turn around, sell for long-term interest rates, and then they give it back to the Fed and to the Treasury and it's not even money that's going back and forth. It's paper that's going back and forth. And as long as they can play this out, they get to take their earnings, they get to put it into the stock market, they get to play with the stock market, and they don't get to put it into capital, they don't put it into collateral, they don't put it into manufacturing jobs, and it's all tied together. All right? But this show is about WikiLeaks versus Wiki Floods. We've got Wiki Floods going on right now and wiki floods is dropping the bomb on they don't like the fact that we that he them blew the doors open on how deeply connected wall street is to the day-to-day -day operations of the white house that's the key because the money people don't want us to know just how the game gets worked precisely the details they don't want to name names and that's what's happening right now so they want to shut them down and even though the libertarians know this and even though the progressives know this and even though the um, um, the the greens know this or however you want it, they're doing this because they don't want to, and, and that Hillary is gonna win is they don't want they want to minimize their their future losses they want to be able to shut him up, just like they shut up Edward Snowden, just like they tried to shut up everyone else who wants to be a whistleblower. Just like what they're doing, what they tried to do with, um, with um, Amy Goodman. See, they put Amy Goodman under, she's rioting, and she got out of that one. So another journalist doesn't think they're going to have the balls to go and cover uh, something like that. It's just like with animal rights. If you go out and you go against animal rights, that's actually terrorism in the way it's listed, and you actually get a felony for terrorism. Just like what the, ND, the National Defense Authorization Act could do to any one of us who's a citizen activist, they could put us down for a terrorist. Well, we are terrorists. We're truth terrorists. We're telling the truth, and we're doing it over and over and over and over again. And over and over and over and over and over again, because that is the key to marketing. You keep telling something over and over again until it becomes a reality. We're being lied to by their pitch that the only thing America has ever invented is PR. And their PR is now getting in a competition with our PR. This is what I love about being with real progressives. Real pro progressives lets my freak flag fly. You know, I get to I get to put it down just the way I've learned it, just the way I've been taught by whistleblowers, and I get the time to do it. But we only have 19 days to do this. All right. Martin Luther King talked about the urgency of now, and he meant it. And Martin Luther King created people to get out into the streets and march. And we have smartphones that are production companies with information that is mad, mad information. And we got to get that out. If you're not sharing this, this is just entertainment for you. This is just mental masturbation for you. And I don't want to play that game. This isn't fucking porn for you. This is about getting it out to as many people as possible and making sure where I'm missing the story somebody holds me accountable. But I think by the research that I've done and I think about what I've been looking at and how I've been taking that information and checking it in with my sources that you're going to find that this is a real simple story. They want to shut Julian Assange up so he doesn't drop another bomb because the last one was too big. 
They just showed all the connections. They showed who's friends with whom. They showed that Hillary Clinton isn't talking about people. Hillary Clinton's not talking about how to help people. You know, what's the next thing that they're going to drop? That Hillary Clinton is eating Syrian children? Nobody give a fucking care about that kind of stuff because they're going to just find something else. Today they did something about Donald Trump Jr. and what he said about, I don't even give a fuck, you know? Who cares? You know, I worked with developers and I worked with a lot of businessmen in my 20s and in my 30s. All these guys who have a lot of money are pricks and they all talk that way. They all talk about pussy, not the locker room. I'm talking about the people with power. They think they're hot shit and they think they could do whatever they want to whomever they want. And it's disgusting. It's pathetic. And that's why I went into the charity world. And that's why I feel blessed that I was able to develop something to help other people. And then I went into politics. And politics is a blood sport. And politics is a shortcut to power. And politics will, you play the game at any stake. And in Colorado, no one's ever been indicted in politics. Like in Chicago, where four of the last five governors are serving time in the big house. Or as we say in Chicago, the crossbar motel. In Colorado, the way you pay somebody off is you take them out to lunch, you pat them on the back, you stroke their ego, and you make them think that they're going to move up in the party. This is an oil and gas state in Colorado, and Michael Bennett, the guy that I'm running against, was on the short list for VP instead of John Hickenlooper. And Ken Salazar, who I have his cell phone number, because I worked with all these guys, was a U.S. Senator, was the Attorney General, and was the Secretary of Interior, Interior. And if you don't believe me, there's pictures of me in his office at the Secretary of Interior. Now, Ken was a good guy, and everyone else I met, and everybody else I worked with, they were really good guys. You know? You start to meet them, you do work with them, they never ask anyone, and this is important to understand. Don't think that when you're in the room with them that they're cutting deals. Some people do that. Some people are bad. But some people do it incrementally because they think they're trying to do the right thing and they're trying to do the right thing against the bad thing. And they just keep moving and they don't have the ability to look at it from the 35,000 foot view and see what their actions are doing. Well, we know here at Real Progressive, and my show is The Unscrewing of America, you know, say nightly. We're, we know it, and we're sharing it. And so Ken Salazar is the transition person for Hillary Clinton, and Michael Bennett was almost the VP candidate. And they couldn't find anyone, they found somebody more boring than Michael Bennett and Tim Kaine. No, they find people who know how to make money for the Democratic Party. And the way you make money for the Democratic Party is you go to the finance industry, you go to the military industry, you go to oil and gas, you go to big pharma and health care, and you go to big agriculture. That's why we don't have our food labeled. And then you bring in the Israeli neocon, the Zionist, the big money, follow the big money out of Israel, follow the big money in America that is... Just look at Hillary Clinton's speeches on APACs, to APAC. You know, just look at how much money we've give Israel, five, almost five billion dollars. And don't think it's just money that we give them. We give them reconnaissance. We give them the ability to know. Uh, we give them our foreign policy. That's why we're balkanizing the Middle East, for them, because small countries are easier to manage if they're in civil war than if it was three large countries like Iran, Iraq, Egypt now is on the tit. We're giving them a bunch of weapons. You know, Turkey is playing all sides against the middle. Saudi Arabia is in bed with us and we're in a war in Yemen. And WikiLeaks, WikiLeaks and Julian Assange are heroes. They got 
they got it all together telling us what's going down. And I listed seven of the areas where it's all going down. All right? So we know this shit. Same shit, different shovel, right? In the past, they were doing it under the Bush administration a different way, and then they were doing it under the Clinton administration in a different way, but the outcome is all the same. Preserve Wall Street. Preserve those five entities plus the Zionist, as I just explained. So what are we going to do about this? What's our call to action? What's our direct action? What are we going to do, sit around and jerk off? Or are we going to take this information and we're going to go into the streets? Are we going to take this inf information and are we going to show up to candidate debates and ask for the things that we want on the federal level? Are we going to go on Twitter and start to take down the journalist and the, um, the candidates? It's real simple. Hashtag or retweeting. So Anonymous took my stuff today, 1.6 million followers, and they retweeted it, and it's up to 150. And if that shit gets up to 200, 500, 1,000, we got a real horse race on our hands because we've created the counter-narrative on Twitter, and everybody's looking at it. And you know who's looking at it because of the way I tagged it? Edward Snowden. John Kiriakou, Thomas Drake, Chelsea Manning, Glenn Greenwald, and WikiLeaks. So call me crazy, call me crafty, but I ain't got nothing unless you're helping me out. You know, this is some stupid Jimmy Fallon talk show then. And I'm not here to entertain. I'm here to save lives. I want to save lives. 19 days left. And I don't believe that we can't do it. I don't believe that we're running out of time. Tomorrow I'll be at a uh, forum in Denver uh, from 12 o'clock until 2, and I could use some help there. I'm speaking on behalf of running for U.S. Senator in the state of Colorado, but I'm going to talk about these type of issues. And I want to get that out, and I need my crew there. And then uh, Holly Sterling and I and a few people are getting together for dinner on Saturday night. And Holly Sterling is Jeffrey Sterling's wife, and Jeffrey is not getting the medical attention that he needs because he's a black man in jail, and he pulled on Superman's cape. So what they want to do to Jeffrey is let him die. And what he's learning is when he talked about committing suicide, they rushed him down and they started giving him all the attention that they needed because you can't cover up a suicide like you can a heart attack. So this is, this. imagine if you were Jeffrey Sterling and you pulled on Superman's cape because you think you're a badass and they throw you in jail and nobody gives a shit about you and your wife can't do anything about it and we made phone calls and Michael Bennett's office sent a letter over asking for information on what's going on with his medical treatment. That's not too shabby, right? That helps out Holly, who's freaking out. So we're going to have dinner with her. She's going to see Jeffrey. We need an attorney to help Jeffrey Sterling. We need a Colorado attorney, and we're going to need to raise money in order to help Jeffrey Sterling. That's where Holly is right now. Jeffrey was, was, um, had passed the bar and was an attorney and worked with the CIA and was trying to serve our country. So... We need to figure out an attorney who knows how to put together a case against the penal system in Colorado, or it's a federal government. And that's not too complicated, but more than anything, we need somebody who knows how to bust balls and be tenacious and not take shit from somebody. So if you know an attorney in Colorado who wants to have some fun, uh, send them our way. That would be unbelievably huge. That is such... A difficult situation that we're all dealing with in the whistleblower world. And then I'm going to take a red eye to Washington, D.C., and I'm going to be in Washington all day on Sunday for the Real Progressives March to, for, uh, for, for Democracy, and that's being posted on this site. 
and we got to get as many people out there as possible. You know, drive out there, fly out there, take that um, the money that you wanted to use to go to Coachella or to Burning Man or to the World Series or to whatever, you know, buy another bag or some crap like that, and head over to uh, Washington, D.C. and listen to some amazing people talk about election fraud and talk about what's going down. And then uh, some of us who are spirited, we're going to do some other stuff. And we're, hopefully we're all going to get together and meet and have food together and break bread and talk about what the tribe needs. We need to love each other and we need to be there for one another. We need to make sure that we're all ta taking care of each other because we do love each other. We really do. And the reason we love each other is because we're trying to save lives. We're not here for ourselves. We're trying to help other people, and through that, we have a better life. And then on Monday, we're doing a peace demonstration on Capitol Steps, and I fly back here on Tuesday, and Tuesday night, October 25th, there's the Free and Equal Stand Up for Democracy event at Colorado University in Boulder with Flowbot, with Nelson Mandela's grandson, with... Um, um, Bob Marley's son and a bunch of other real cool people and be on stage talking about the truth. And there'll be direct actions in there and there'll be direct actions in there and there'll be direct actions in there. So let me finish with this. Um, things are changing insanely rapidly right now. And it's hard for us to process everything. But all we have to know is Stay in today and tomorrow in the short term right now. Believe that you have all the tools. If you have a smartphone and you get a battery pack and you have a cord and you have earbuds, you can be a citizen journalist. Don't think somebody is smarter, richer, better looking, whatever, than you are. Because no one is. Everybody's making mistakes all the time. Just follow your heart and stay in love and compassion and fight for truth and justice and people will call you and people will be involved with you if you do it for yourself people will see it and they won't want to hang out with you if you're in self-pity and you think you're not able to do it because you don't have enough money because you're too sick because of whatever people aren't going to hang around with you people want to hang around with winners People want to hang around with people who see the glass that is half full. People want to hang around with people who have sick fucking or reverent sense of humor because that's the only thing I got. <laughs> and people want to see, most importantly, results. So I want to thank the people who helped me out with Anonymous today and getting that story out. I want to thank Real Progressive and I want to thank my crew for helping me put this show together and get all the information together. Maria, Jordan, Rita, Kelly, all you guys that are helping me get the word out. I want to thank the people from last night who make sure that when I show up to an event, we've got uh, the stuff we need, the handouts, Lizzie and, uh, and, and, and um, Eric and Josh. Um, so this one I'm going to dedicate to Julian Assange and his crew and for what they're doing and how they're being shut down and if we put ourselves in their role we let them know that we're helping and something tells me they'll find out that we're making a lot of noise I'm Arn Men Coney, thanks for watching peace hey spread the love